Today I want to talk about hypoxia, uh, the four different types of hypoxia as well as what it is in general and um, how it occurs. So to start out with, hypoxia is a lack of blood, excuse me, a lack of oxygen available in the brain. So there you go. Hypoxia is a lack of oxygen available in the brain. Other organs such as uh, your heart, your lungs, your foot, uh, they can all go without oxygen as well but we don't really care about those for the purposes of this discussion. For the purposes of this discussion uh, we're going to concern ourselves only with a lack of oxygen available to the brain. So to start out with we're going to draw a human figure. So we're going to draw I said this represents a person and it's pretty terrible but that's alright. Uh, we'll give him some eyes and we'll give him a brain so there's his brain right there uh, and that's what we're talking about we're talking about the brain um, for in general for all of these now under normal circumstances um, how uh, respiration works. So how respiration works in general is the person will, uh, you've got oxygen outside uh, in the atmosphere. The person is going to take a breath, he's going to inhale. Oxygen is going to go into his lungs. Uh, we'll draw some lungs up here. Um, and I suppose we could probably erase this. So there we go. All right, so oxygen travels into the lungs, and it uh, it diffuses into the lungs. So you've got oxygen all here inside the lungs. From there, um, the oxygen is transferred into the blood. So it transfers out of the lungs and into the blood. Uh, travels to the heart. So you've got your heart right here, and from the heart, it proceeds upward to the brain uh, and then the brain uses it for whatever it needs to do. That's how respiration works in general. Uh, oxygen is taken from the outside into uh, the lungs, from the lungs to the blood, from the blood to the heart, from the heart up to the brain and uh, there you go. Now we're going to talk about how respiration can fail. So let's get rid of that. Let's redraw the person. So there's your person again. There's his eye. And yeah, we'll get his brain in here. And if I'm smart, I did exactly the same thing this time. So there's a the guy, there's his brain. We'll get his lungs in there. Yeah, that'll work and we'll put his heart in there. So there we have a heart. Not as good a picture as last time but no big deal. Alright, so from here uh, we're going to talk about the four different types of hypoxia. The first type is uh, stagnant hypoxia. And stagnant hypoxia occurs when air from the outside uh, is available to the body. So you've got oxygen out here, uh, breathes in the oxygen, and the oxygen travels in, diffuses through the lungs. Uh, from there, it gets absorbed into the blood. From the blood, it travels to the heart. And then from the heart, it attempts to go to the brain, but for whatever reason, it's blocked. Um, so the oxygen can no longer make it up to the brain for whatever reason. It's, it's, it, it has gotten to the heart and it's trying to get pumped up to the brain and the heart is not physically able 
to pump the oxygen up to the brain. That's called stagnant hypoxia. So stagnant hypoxia um, occurs when the heart cannot pump pump blood to the brain. Stagnant hypoxia. Usually caused by is g-force. As uh, pilots fly and uh, they put the airplane into high g-maneuvers, the additional g-forces on the pilot prevent the heart from pumping blood up to the brain of the pilot. Uh, that causes uh, the brain to no longer have the oxygen that it needs, which causes hypoxia. So that's one type. Another type would be um, hypoxic hypoxia. And hypoxic hypoxia is very simple. You don't have the oxygen outside the body that you need. With no oxygen available outside the body, it can't be breathed in. There's nothing available for the lungs. There's very little oxygen getting absorbed into the heart. There's very little oxygen coming up to the brain. So, hypoxic hypoxia is simply not enough oxygen in the external not enough oxygen in the external environment. And if there's not enough oxygen outside, it can't be breathed in, it can't move to the heart, it can't move to the brain, and you're stuck. Uh, the next one is hypemic hypoxia. And hypemic hypoxia is um, occurs when oxygen outside the body is breathed into the body, it diffuses through the lungs, and it's trying to diffuse into the blood as well. So the oxygen is diffusing into the blood. However, for some reason, the blood is not picking up the oxygen. So the blood fails to pick up the oxygen as it moves to the heart, it moves up to the brain, and it's traveling to the brain, it's, uh, it's reaching the brain, but because there's no oxygen soaked into the blood, uh, the brain has no oxygen available to it. Mm -hmm. So the oxygen has come in uh, to the person, it's come into the lungs, the, um, it's, it's diffused through the lungs, but none of it is being picked up and moved by the blood itself. So hypemic hypoxia is a failure of the blood to transport, uh, actually Let's take that back to absorb oxygen for later travel up to the brain. Um, causes of this one are usually uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. For example, if um, if carbon monoxide exists in the outside atmosphere and it travels into the lungs, carbon monoxide will immediately bond with blood. Uh, and the blood will carry the carbon monoxide much more readily than it will carry oxygen. And so now your blood is filled with carbon monoxide. The carbon monoxide travels to the heart, travels to the brain, uh, and when it reaches the brain, there is no oxygen available to the brain because the blood is transporting carbon monoxide. That's hypemic hypoxia. Hypemic hypoxia has other causes as well, uh, but the primary one to be concerned with in aviation is carbon monoxide. Uh, the final uh, type of hypoxia is histotoxic hypoxia. And in histotoxic hypoxia, it is a failure of the brain to use oxygen effectively. So, you have oxygen available outside the body, the oxygen is being breathed in, it's diffusing through the lungs, it's being absorbed into the blood, 
Uh, the blood carry is carried to the heart. From the heart, it travels up to the brain, and it even reaches the brain. But at the time that it reaches the brain, because some other chemical is present in the brain, usually alcohol, but it could be any chemical, because some other chemical is present in the brain, the oxygen cannot absorb into the brain. The brain cannot effectively make use of the oxygen. So, although the oxygen is reaching the brain, the brain is unable to use it because of the presence of some other chemical. And usually, that chemical is um, alcohol, which might be present in the stomach, uh, the intestine, uh, the liver, or wherever else. And as that alcohol travels through the body, um, it uh, prevents oxygen from reaching and being used effectively by the brain. So histotoxic hypoxia, again, toxic, is some chemical which is interfering with the brain's ability to use oxygen effectively. So what that means is we've got four different types of hypoxia. We've got stagnant hypoxia. Uh, the heart uh, oxygen is reaching the lungs. Uh, it's reaching the heart, but the heart cannot pump it up to the brain. We've got hypoxic hypoxia, which means there's simply not enough oxygen outside, and so none of it can reach the brain. We've got hypemic hypoxia, which is a failure of the blood to absorb the oxygen necessary to then be moved to the brain. And finally, we have histotoxic hypoxia, which is a failure of the brain to use oxygen effectively. And those are the four major types of hypoxia.